Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm going to say it one more time. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. Because it is a good morning. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I feel like it and I want to rejoice and be glad in it. Huh? Huh? I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I, I, I don't know about you, but this pandemic has changed. It changed my thoughts. I'm sure it's changed some other people's thoughts. When we was locked up in the house for over a year and couldn't go anywhere, couldn't go places, churches was closed. Uh, I say from my heart, I was glad, even though for me, it was never shut down. <laughs> As part of the essential staff, I've been here since the pandemic started, but I missed all of you. I love seeing your faces in the, in the crowd. Hallelujah. And that, that makes me even more, more glad to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I don't have to use my imagination. I can look over and see you smiling. Amen. I don't have to wonder how you're doing. I can look and see how you're doing. Praise God. We welcome you here at 270 Cumberland Street uh, for our cyber church. Hallelujah. God bless you. We're so glad to have you still yet hanging in there. And what I'd like to see, I'd love to see if you're in the neighborhood, if you're in Rochester and you're a part of our cyber church, we'd love to see you come in one day. We are uh, still obeying the CDC rules. Um, so uh, we're being extremely careful. We, we didn't just say, oh, we're going to stop doing everything now because the governor said this is it. We are still being careful. So you can come here and know that you're going to be safe. Amen. We got a crew that worked that door. Amen. They work the door and they don't let anybody just slide in. Amen. Uh, myself, the pastor, they, they are in charge and, and we submit to them. Amen. We submit to them because they're doing an excellent job. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for them and we thank God for you. And we would really love to see you in the house. Amen. Come on back in the house. Amen. And right now, we're going to open up our service, and we're going to have prayer. And uh, I believe our pastor emeritus will be praying for us this morning. Amen. I, God bless my pastor emeritus. He's 80 years old, but if I didn't tell it, you wouldn't know it. Amen. Amen. He's a young man. And I do mean that. He's a young man. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. We give God praise this morning. I mean, hallelujah. We give God praise this morning. Good God Almighty. I just thank God today. We are back, amen, in the house of worship. We come to what? We come to give God some praises. We come to worship God. Ain't that right, somebody? I know I did that. What about you? Can you say amen to that, somebody? I came to give God some praises. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. I, I, first, I want to say thank God for taking my wife and I, amen, away for a few days. Amen. Uh, 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 got a little rest and had a good time. Amen. Thank the Lord. Brought us back home safely. Hallelujah. Everybody don't get back home safely. Come on, somebody. Everybody don't make it back home. Thank the Lord. But God is good. So y'all know God is good. I want to say, we get better to pray. There is no time to complain. So much going on. So much happening. Good God Almighty. Look at down in Florida, that condominium, praise the Lord, that fell down and all those people still missing. Church, we are blessed. We got homes. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You ought to want to give God praise. That song said, I won't complain. I'm not going to complain. I mean that. I, I got a reason to give God some praise because God is good. He said, everything, give him thanks. 
you ought to be giving God some thanks, amen, because it could be us. Amen. It, it could be worse than this. Isn't that right, somebody? Look at the lives of being lost. Our young people being murdered on the streets. So much, oh God, help me today, God. So much going on. Y'all know the story. It's time to pray. It's no time for war for us. It's no time to complain, but it's time to pray somebody. Can I get an amen, somebody? Just wave your hands and say, hallelujah in the house. Oh God, that's what I got say. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you right now, God. I thank you, God. God, I thank you, Lord. God, I thank you right now, God. Because God, you are God. And beside you, there's none other, Lord. We need your master. And first and foremost, we say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for food. Thank you for housing. God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for our family. We're here, God, to give you praise to God. We hear God to wish you, God, in spirit and in truth, God. We pray now, God, bless our gathering that are here right now. Those that are watching, God, bless us all, God. Because, God, you deserve all our praise, God. You deserve all our worship, God. Have mercy, God. Have your way today, God. There are so many sick, God. There are so many hurting right now. Even down Florida, God, those that got people are missing, Lord. Oh, their hearts are hurting. They're crying out to God, have mercy, Lord. God, give them comfort, God. Hold them up, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. It's certain that this answer of the Lord, God, out of all that goes on, we still say thank you, Lord. Have mercy right now. And now God bless everybody that are here and those that are watching in the name of Jesus Christ, realizing, God, there are so many that are sick right now. So many, God, laying up in the bed. Oh, God, all kind of sickness and illness with the virus. But, oh, God, you the healer. I read it, God. I read it, God. You said, I'm the Lord, God, that heal it all our diseases. Forgive us all our iniquity. Heal all our diseases. Your word said it, God. We should be healing today, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, do it, Master. Oh, God, do it, Master. Do it for your people. And I know you love us. You want us healed. You want us well. Oh, God, touch right now. Oh, God, those that are not saved, God. So many are bound on alcohol and drugs. They're bound by hate. All kind of bound by malice. Bound by racism. But, oh, God, we pray today in the name of Jesus Christ. We say, tear down, God. Tear down, God. Tear down in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we realize today that the anointing will destroy the yoke. Oh, God, do it, Master. Do it, Master. Do it, Master. In Jesus' name, save somebody. In Jesus' name, oh God, our pastor, look on the pastor we are Lord today. We pray your known be upon him. You give him the word that need to be given to us. Open the ears of our people, Lord, that they're here, not being stubborn, not being disobedient, but they were here and obey what you say. God save, Lord, save somebody, save somebody. Christ, you come to save us in Jesus' name, and God, we will. Devil, use a liar. We will give God some praise. Devil, you're a liar. We're going to worship God. Some might not feel like it, but we're going to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Woo. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Woo. God, I'm out of my, 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 my. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I love you, Lord. I love you so much. Asking your son, Jesus, name. Woo. God, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. God. Continue to praise him. Come on, let's worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, open up your mouth and continue to worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. 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 Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right.
told me to run or oh, pick me up and told me to run or oh, he's my friend well he healed my body oh he healed my body told me to run on heal my body told me to run on Nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like oh, Jesus. Can't, can't nobody, nobody do me like oh, Jesus. Can't nobody do me like 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 Jesus. Hey, can't nobody. Can't nobody. Here I am to 
bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Hallelujah. We're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. Come on, here I am to worship. Here I am. Worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together you're all together love Holy Spirit fall Thank you. 
Lord God. I just want to thank. Oh, I just want. I just want to thank you. you. Stay right there. Come on. Press in. Press in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank we don't want to ask him for anything, but we want to thank him for everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 I just gotta thank we him. Worship you, God. I just, I just gotta you, Lord. thank him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, Zion. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, Zion. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Lift your hands. All ye people, hallelujah. He's been so good. Ah, he's been so good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Hallelujah. I will bless his holy name. Oh, God, we greet you. Amen. Praise God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We bring greetings. Amen. We thank God for our Facebook listeners and our online listeners, our Zoom listeners. From Prayer House Church of God by Faith, we say we love you. Amen. Praise God. We're so grateful to have you with us on this morning. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to spend this brief period of time. Amen. Praise God with us. We thank God for all of our visitors. I see my good friend Patricia in the house in loan from Zion Hill. We thank God for you. We may have to steal her from, oh, from Zion Hill. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> amen. Praise God. We thank God for all of our visitors, all of you who are with us. Amen. Praise God. All, amen, our dear, my, my wife, amen. Praise God. Prophetess, First Lady Verdina Lightfoot. Come on, give it up for the First Lady. Amen. She stepped out for a minute. Amen. We give it up for our dear Pastor Emeritus, Dr. George Daly and Eldora Daly in the house, coming all the way from Niagara Falls. <laughs> you see that smile on her face too. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> we thank God for the pastor and his, and his wife. Amen. We thank God for all of our elders, Elder Andrews and his wife, Minister Tyson, Elder Leonard. Amen. Praise God. Our musicians. Minister Shawanda Owens and her team, amen, we thank God for them leading us into the house of worship, into prayer and worship, right? Praise and worship. We thank God for our media team, amen. We thank God for our greeters, our screeners, our deacons, deaconesses, our mothers, all of our members, all saints and friends, the ushers, all of you in your respective places, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated, amen. Praise God. We have a brief word we're going to share with you on today, amen. A brief word we're going to share with you on today. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Judges chapter 16, verse 1 through 7. Put a pen in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. So again, that's Judges chapter 16, verse 1 through 7. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 13. Now we know one through seven, that's seven verses, and then Corinthians 10, 13 makes actually eight. And we know that the number seven is the number of completion. And we know the number eight is the number of new beginnings. So I believe, and that just came to me right now, I did not plan that, or one that was not in my notes, but I think that has significance on today. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a quick brief prayer and then we're going to go into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you right now for all that you're doing. We thank you, Father, for the songs that have been played, for the music that has been played, for all who have played a role into making your word be, a be able to go out into the highways and hedges, compelling men and women, God, to come so that your house may be filled. We thank you for having a mind, God, to 
want to do your work and want to do kingdom work. We thank you for having a mind, God, uh, to come into your house one more time. We thank you for how you protected us and how you've kept us. And we pray in the name of Jesus as we break your bread, your word, God, that you give us wisdom and understanding. We pray that you would anoint your word, God, for our lives and that you would shape our lives with your word, God. We give you all the glory to all the praise and we humble ourselves and decrease so that you may increase. Use thy servant, save, set free, deliver. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, saints and friends, um, I would have for a topic uh, to jog your memory of this particular message. I'm going to try not to do a lot of yelling, hollering, and screaming today. Amen. We're going to talk to you today if that's all right. Can we talk to you today? We want to get something across to you today. The title of this particular message is Don't Get Trapped, Look for the Way Out. Don't get trapped. Look for the way out. Judges chapter 16, verse 1 through 7 says, and this is an NIV version. It says, one day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and they lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, at dawn, we kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Can somebody please tell them over there? It's, 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 it's very interrupting. They're very loud out there. It's very disturbing. Thank you. We'll go back to verse 3. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Verse 4. Some time later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see, if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him, each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Deliah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 reads as, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful that he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, somebody say, but. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Saints and friends, uh, we would offer again, the topic is don't get trapped. Look for the way out. Just simply real quickly, we're going to try to go through four keys with you on this particular morning. And the first key is you got to know your weakness. Can I help you today? You got to know your weakness. Or maybe even, mother, you have to know your weaknesses. Oh, somebody didn't catch that. You got to know your weakness. And you may need to know your weaknesses. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says in the NIV, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through worldless groans. For we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings to deep for words, too deep for words. Understand, saints and friends, you got to know what makes you click. Mm -hmm. You got to know what makes you click. And when you're looking at this particular example of Samson, it's just a simple story. And we don't, we've, we've heard the story up before, before, but I don't want you to get so brought and so uh, tied up, amen, particularly on just Samson. But I want you to understand in, in the figurative, and I want you to, and not just in the literative, but in the spiritual, I want you to look at the fact that Samson had a gift. Hello, somebody. Samson had a gift. We all have a gift. Amen, somebody. And the Bible talks about when we have this gift, because all good gifts come from what? They come from above. That means they come from God. And I want you to understand, and you must understand, saints and friends, that the devil is always trying to do what? What is his job? His job is to steal, kill, and to destroy. Don't get trapped. See, 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 you got a gift that God has imparted in you. And the first gift you have, uh, the gift of life, uh, first and foremost, because everybody didn't make it into life. Uh, everybody didn't make it out of the womb. Uh, people were, in, even in, as an embryo, uh, they were aborted. Uh, they didn't make it into this world. But God said, I foreknew you. Uh, he knew you before the beginning of time that God allowed, and some of you got testimonies uh, where you were almost, amen, you were born in the house, uh, where you were born, amen, praise God, uh, in a car, where you were born, amen, in some un foreseen play. You wasn't born in a hospital. You were, you had a tough birth. Some of you, amen, were told, amen, you didn't know because, of course, you were a baby or infant, but your parents told you that you you were lucky to be, you were blessed to be alive. You 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 were blessed to be alive because you of the complications that may have happened during the pregnancy. But God knew you were going to be a God, and the first thing that we must understand is that the first gift that you have is the gift of life. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I think oftentimes when we first wake up in the morning and when we get up, that's the first thing we thank God. We thank God, right? We thank God because this is not, I could be looking, amen, praise God. Uh, amen. They said, this is not my cooling bed or this is, amen, praise God, that, that I've given the opportunity, God, to have life. You, you've allowed me another chance, God. You allowed me to wake up this morning. You gave me life, health, and strength. You allow me, amen, praise God, to be able to open up my eyes. Somebody can't open up their eyes this morning. Somebody Somebody didn't get up this morning. Somebody's in the hospital. They didn't make it out today. Somebody, amen, praise God, didn't, it lost that gift of life. Mm. So we must understand, saints and friends, that not only do we have the gift of life, but God has given every one of us, if you've called yourself a Christian, he's given you eternal life. Oh, how somebody catch that in a minute. Oh, not only do I have the gift of physical life, of this life on this earth, but I also have the gift of eternal life because he so gave his only begotten son. Amen. Praise God. He gave him for me and you. He gave him. And once you came into a new creature, you took off of the old man. You took off of the old woman and you put on a new nature. You put on a new person and you became new. You became new in God. And that new means that you were set apart. You were sanctified. Hello, somebody. And sanctified means that you were set apart. And what set you apart from them and you is God. Come on, somebody. Yes, I feel this. I'm going to take my time up in here today. But see, listen, so we have the gift of life, and then we have the gift, amen, praise God, of eternal life if we've received Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. But we must understand something, saints of God, as Samson went through life, he had the gift of life, amen, praise God, but then he also had a special gift. Mm -hmm. He had something that many couldn't do. He was strong beyond other men, multiple thousands of men, he was so strong that he could take his hands and pull down pillars and walls. He was so strong, amen, praise God, and amen, that he, he, they couldn't do what Samson can do. People couldn't have the, the strength that he had, amen. He could slay a whole army all by himself. He had a gift. 
But I want to share with you, saints of God, and, and, and number two, you got to know your weaknesses. See, Samson had a gift, but he also knew his weakness. His weakness was his hair. His hair, right, mother? His weakness was his hair. I believe that Samson, you know, I, I know I have some Jamaican friends, you know, and one and part of their uh, Rastafarian culture is that, uh, and religion it is, that they don't cut their hair. And I've seen some, amen, praise God, hair all the way down to the ground. I've seen dreadlocks all the way down to the ground. And I believe it's just me now. I believe Samson had real long, pretty hair. I believe he had pretty. I believe his hair was prettier than women hair. Come on, somebody. And in this situation that we're seeing, amen, praise God, that I want to let you know that the devil is trying to find out what your gift is. The devil is trying, amen, praise God, to find out what your weakness is. Amen. And key number two is you can't share everything with everybody. Yeah, you can't share everything, Deke, with everybody. So you don't, you can't get trapped. And the Bible tells us about that. It says, amen, praise God. That, that, that province says, uh, the uh, 12, chapter 23, Proverbs 12 and 23, it said the prudent keep their knowledge to themselves. But a fool's heart blurts out folly. Uh-huh. Yeah, that means, amen, praise God. You got to be careful what you share with other people. How many know you can't share your dreams with everybody? You can't share your visions. You can't share, amen. I'm not talking about your testimony. I didn't say you can't share your testimony. You can't share your dreams and your plans, amen, with everybody. Come on, I know I'm talking to somebody today because, amen, somebody that's everybody don't like you. Oh, well, I'm gonna put it to you like this. I'm gonna take it out from the literal people. The devil doesn't like you. How about that? The devil does can't stand you because you got something the devil could never have. You got eternal life in heaven and devil can never have that ever, ever, ever again in life. You, He's jealous of you. Can I get a witness in here? Mm. And I want to tell you something, saints and friends, that don't get trapped and look for the way out. Amen. I'm thinking about, amen, when I was in the military and when I was in the fire department, amen, praise God, that they would train us. We would train and they would trap us on purpose, trap us on purpose so that we would understand how it feels to be trapped. Uh -huh, so you don't wig out and freak out and go crazy and run out of air because we only got so much air in those tanks on our back. And they would show us how to preserve our air. They would show us, amen, praise God, how to sing you sing a song, amen, praise God. Hey, ho, 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 I'm trying not to move too fast, but I, I had a flashback, amen, praise God. Uh, they tell us how to sing a song, amen, praise God, when you get trapped. And I remember one time I got trapped and I started singing a song. Oh, God, amen. I said, I was singing a song. I was singing a church song. Oh, I was like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. And every time I'm doing that, amen, praise God, I'm, I'm saving, I'm reserving air, amen, praise God, because I'm trying to figure out how to get untrapped. But I want to get somebody, I'm going to free somebody today. We're going to free some slaves today. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand that the devil is trying to trap you up. Mm-hmm. And it's the people that are around you that he's using to set the trap. And Samson, see, we look at this story. Samson knew his strength, but he also knew his weakness. And one thing they ask, and I'm going to tell you, people will sell you out for a little bit of nothing. People will sell you out for a few dollars, a few shekels. Amen. Praise God. So don't think, amen, that you're too, you, you're not, you, you, that this can't touch you. Don't think that you can't be trapped. You can be trapped too. So, so, so what the enemy will try to do is he'll get, try to get you to share your vision. Try to get you to share your plan. Try to get you to share information. Yeah, be careful when you're around people and they keep asking you all these questions question after question but well, what is about this and what about that and tell me about this and tell me about that and tell me about this and they sitting back and they taking notes about you hello somebody then you wonder how your stuff got on facebook 
You wonder how your stuff got on Twitter. You wonder how the whole Rochester know about your stuff because you told it. Don't get trapped. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, so he's, 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 he's got lured in. And see, we, we get caught up on the prostitute. We get caught up on what he did. But see, no, I'm going to tell you, everybody got a trap. What is your hair? What is your Samson? If you, if you was making, you may have been delivered from alcohol. Well, you don't need to be going to no bar. You may have been delivered from women. You don't need to be up in no strip club. You may have been delivered from crack cocaine. You don't need to be hanging out on Jefferson. Clinton. Hello, somebody. You may be a compulsive thief. You don't need to work for no bank. You might have been a big old liar. Well, you don't need to be no judge. Don't need to be a police officer. Don't get trapped. So what he did is he got around his weakness. And we all got one. Yes, 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 yeah. You can look at me funny if you want to, but you got a weakness too. Yes, we all got a weakness. And he got around this woman. Uh-huh. And the woman started rocking him to sleep. Yes, he did. Uh-huh. Probably was rubbing on that hair. Come on, somebody. Rubbing on that hair. And she said, come on and tell me what your weakness is. Now, I want to let you know. I'm talking about, can I talk to the real men today? The real men. Real men. Real men. Real men. A woman got a special touch. Hello, somebody. Y'all can look at me funny if you want to. A woman, you know, oftentimes in wars, they'll send a woman in. They'll send a woman in to bring down a ruler. They'll send a woman in to bring down a church. They'll send women in to do the dirty work, to be the witches and the imps from the devil. Hello, somebody. They'll send a devil woman, a woman full of hell. Say they saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and they full of hell. Don't get trapped. She brought him, he brought, he came, came on in. And they were plotting all the time. Some people are plotting on you right now. They stay up. Let me listen. The Bible said they stayed up all night at the gate. This is so crazy. This just came to me. When I first met <laughs> my wife, no, my, my wife's father, my father-in-law, said this to me some years ago, talking about jealousy. He said, Willie. Some people stay up all night long, all night long, plotting and scheming on you. That thing messed me up, man. I said, what, what, what? He said, some people stay up all night long, plotting and scheming on how to bring you down. And here we are, Samson is in a situation with us sitting at the gate all night long, plotting and scheming on how can they get the man to his weakness. And the woman, now what I didn't read, and you can go back and read it for yourself, Samson had a way of escape. He did. Because he told her several times, he lied to her several times. He said, yeah, it's this. And she came back and said, why did you make a fool of me? Oh, why did you do me like that and embarrass me in front of everybody? When I went back, you know how women, why did you embarrass me in front of everybody? Oh, my God, and you told me that lie, and it really wasn't that. Tell me what it really is. Stroking that hair. He had a way out. See, we have a way out to the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I got to get done with this. In chapter 10, verse 13, he said, there is no temptation. None has overtaken you except what is common to you. The only temptation that can get you is you. Hello, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the only temptation that can get you is what's common to mankind. 
And God is faithful. Turn the uh, uh, monitors down just a bit, brother. Uh, God, and God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Yes, beyond what you can bear. So that means he's not going to let, thank you, brother. He's not going to let the temptation overtake you. So what does that mean, preacher? That means that you got to look for the way of escape. There's a way of escape. Yes, there is. We had people in the Bible that ran out of their clothes. They got trapped in a situation. And they said, oh, I got to get up out of here. And they ran up out of their clothes, running from the devil. Can I get a witness here? Somebody got to be running for your life. Uh, running to keep your gift, uh, running to keep your anointing, running to keep your ministry, running to keep your family, running to keep your church. Get away from them devil. Get away from them devils. You got to get them devils out of your life. Uh, you got to cut them devils off because uh, they'll bring you down. They trying to trap you. They're trying to trap you because you're special, because you're anointed, mother, because you're blessed, because you are true. See, everybody is not a true saint. I'm learning that, pastor. I'm learning that, mother. Everybody's not a true saint. The devil know the Bible. He know how to dance. He know how to shout. He know how to preach. He know how to do Sunday school. He know how to run the media. He know how to do your usher. He know how to be a deacon. He know all the positions of the church. But you're not gonna trap me. You're not gonna trap me. Now I'm moving, I'm a moving target. I'm moving for Jesus. You can't trap something that's moving. I'm too busy moving. I'm too busy pressing. Mm. So one is know your weakness. Two is don't share everything with everybody. Don't share everything with everybody. Jealousy is a powerful thing. Jealousy is a powerful thing. Let's just think about it for a minute. Jealousy got Luther, uh, uh, Lucifer kicked out of heaven. It was jealousy. That's all it was. He, when he opened his mouth, the whole, they said he was a whole orchestra all by his, they said he was pretty too. He, he had nothing to be jealous of. He had a gift. He had a gift. He had a purpose. What he got to be jealous for? But he wasn't God. And he wanted, and, and see, that's the thing about it now. Jealous people, the Bible says, you, how can two walk together unless they're in agreement? So, so the jealous people hang around. Guess who they hang around? Other jealous people. Birds of a feather flock together. Eagles run with eagles. Pigeons run with pigeons. Mm -hmm. Pigs run with pigs. I ain't getting slapping down with the pigs. I'm an eagle soaring for Jesus. And I don't hang around pigeons. Get your pigeon self away from around me. It's your pigeon self. Don't get trapped. Look for the way out. You got to look for the way out. That's when he call you, don't pick up. He trying to lull you to sleep. Oh, baby, what you doing? What you got on? When she call you, don't hang, don't, don't pick up. You know you got a weakness. You ain't supposed to be eating bacon. And you go to the buff, the bacon buffet and get trapped. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. Don't get trapped. Look for the way out. So he, he had opportunity. He had an opportunity. Let's talk. We talk. We know how to get trapped. We, I think we got that across. Let's talk about the way out. 
Okay, so he said he'll never give us some temptation, but that's what's common. But every temptation, he'll make a way of escape. I told you about the training that we used to get. So part of the training is when we come upon the particular house or when we come upon the place that we're going into, we do a survey of the place. The survey is not so that we can figure, you know, uh, uh, amen, praise God, what the house looked like. It's the survey is really so I can see, okay, if I enter through this door, are there windows on this side? Which ways can I get out? I got to figure out a way to get out. And even to this day, when I travel, amen, praise God, I, I, I'm trained to always look for the exit. I'm trained, amen, when I go into a hotel, oh, hallelujah, I find out where the stairs are. Oh, hallelujah, I find out, amen, how, how, how far am I? I don't like to stay above the eighth floor because, amen, I found out being in the fire department that the ladder of the fire department only goes 110 feet. It'll only make it to the ninth floor. Oh, can I get a witness in here? So I'm going to Position myself. Oh, there's a message right here. It's a key. You got to position yourself to get out. I put myself in a position to escape. See, just like you can put yourself in a position to get trapped, you need to put yourself in a position to get escape. Hmm. You got to, number three, you got to look for a way of escape. You got to find it. You got, because he said he'll make one. He can't lie. He can't lie. So if you got trapped, you got to figure out which, what, did I miss my exit? What did I do, God? Because I must have missed something. Because how did I find myself here? You got to go back to the drawing board. You be in the mall, amen, praise God. And you get lost. What do they do? They have them things in the mall that you can walk up to and say, you are here. You got to get your bearings straight. And as a child of God, the only way you can get your bearings straight is you got to do what Samson had to shake himself. Samson had to get back to God. Samson had to get on his knees. You're going to have to repent. You're going to have to go to God. You're going to have to ask God to show you the way. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. He said, the steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman, they are ordered by the Lord. And if you got off step, you got to go back to the master. You got to go back to the creator. You got to go back to the chief construction man. And you got to ask him. He's the navigator. He's GPS. He's the one that can put you back on track. And you got to say, God, I got off track, God. I got trapped, God. Oh, I can't get out. But you said you make a way of escape. And God, I'm leaning on you, God. I'm leaning on God to help God. He said, come boldly to my throne of grace whereby you can obtain mercy to find help in the time of need. Somebody need to cry help today because you got yourself trapped. And God said, I'm getting ready to make a way of escape, but you're going to have to repent. You got to repent. And I'm going to give you the last and final key as I close. The Bible says to let this flesh die Daily. I'm going to tell you how to get from not getting trapped. And I'm going to change it and I'm going to remix it a little bit. I'm going to say, let this flesh die every second. Every second of the day. Because this thing is so intensified that it, a day is too long. Hold on. A day is too long for some people. Some people can't make it a day. Can I talk to somebody here today? Somebody can't make it a day. You need them every second of the day. That's how you stop from getting trapped. You got to let your flesh die every second, every minute. You got to, the Bible says, meditate on the way of the Lord day and night. He said, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That means you're not going to wither. You can't get trapped. You're not going to die. You're going to flourish in God. But you got to meditate on him. Day and night. Oh, I thank God for the word today. I thank God for your word. We're going to let it go. We're going to let it go. But there's anybody today, anybody, you find yourself trapped. You find yourself trapped today. The first advice I'm going to give you, get rid of them pigeons. Get rid of them pigeon friends you're around. Yeah, they, some of them may even be in the church. 
Stop listening. Listen, the Bible says to be not busybodies in other folks' affairs. If you're talking to somebody and all they're doing is talking about somebody else and they ain't talking about Jesus in themselves, then they a pigeon. Say it again. If you're hanging around people and all they're doing, I'm talking about saints, and all they're doing is talking about somebody else and they ain't talking about Jesus in themselves, they a pigeon. Because my Bible says, examine yourself in the faith. That's what my Bible tells me. It told me to examine myself. Get me right. I got to get Willie right. But there are some people who don't think they do no wrong. Think everything they do is perfect. I told somebody in, 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 in politics in a meeting one day, they had all these PhDs and they have been around a long time. They so smart, right? They so smart. City all jacked up and they so smart. I said, okay. I said, I don't wanna be the smartest man in the room, but I wanna be the wisest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my Bible says, if any man lack of wisdom, he said, let him ask of God. And he'll freely give it. Freely. It don't, wisdom don't cost you nothing. Come on, somebody. It don't cost you nothing. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. There's somebody knocking today. Knocking on Zoom, knocking on Facebook, knocking in person. And God is saying, come on, come on home. Because I know you got trapped. He said, but it's okay. He said, I made a way of escape. And the way of escape is Jesus. Come on to Jesus, just as you are. Wounded, broken. Come and let him make you whole. If that is you today, I simply ask that you just lift your hands and say, Father, I'm a sinner. God, I accept it. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Come into my life. Be my savior. Save me, Lord. Anoint me and fill me with your Holy Ghost. I confess your death, burial, and resurrection. I believe it in my heart. And I'm saved. If you've said that prayer today, Facebook, if you've said that prayer today, Zoom, if you've said that prayer in person, you are saved. And we welcome you to the body of Christ. If you don't have a church home, if you don't have a loving church family, prayer house, we would love to have you in this family, in this loving family, Bible-believing, loving, gospel-teaching church. Come on. We're here at 270 Cumberland Street. Amen. Praise God. You can find us, amen, on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, amen. You can download our app at uh, Amazon, uh, play Google Play Store, amen, praise God, or, or the Android, uh, amen, praise God. And you can download our app, Prayer House C-O-G-B-F, and you can follow us. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Follow us. Send us an email at prayerhouse270 at gmail.com. Prayerhouse270 at gmail.com. And we would love to pray for you. We would love, amen, to hear from you. We would love for you to be a part of this great ministry. We, got, we thank God for you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, we'll have our deacon, our deacon come before us, amen. Praise God. That was a wise message. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. 
if we need to get out of trouble, hallelujah, God has made a way to escape. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that message, Pastor Will. Very needful in this time. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. God is good. And uh, he's done wonderful things for us to get to heaven. One thing after another. He's not left us. He's not forsaken us. Hallelujah. We're not in the hands of Satan. God has made a way to escape. Thank you, Lord. I'm here to raise the church offering. Uh, we are a gospel church. We're on a mission. We have a vision. And we believe that God is using us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we invite you to be a part of that mission, of that vision. Come on with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anything we can do to support this ministry, I believe, is pleasing to God. Thank you, Jesus. We have several ways that you can give if you want to be a part. Uh, Pastor has already mentioned our church app, Prayer House COGBF. And you can install it from Google Play, uh, the App Store, or from Amazon. Scroll down and you'll find the Ties and Offering button. And follow the prompts thereafter. And we will receive your offering. Thank you, Lord. If you have Cash App on your device, look for Prayer House 270. Prayer House 270. And you can give that way. Uh, we have the Tithely app. And uh, we are going to be discontinuing this Tithely app after this week uh, to make it easier on our, on our back office. And, uh, but you can find us today. Uh, if you have Tithely on your phone or device, uh, look for Prayer House Church of God by Faith. Praise the Lord. Prayer house, Church of God by faith. And you can give that way. Uh, you can also give by way of the U.S. mail. You can mail your offering in to Prayer House, Church of God by faith, P.O. Box 30108, Rochester, New York. P.O. Box 30108, Rochester, New York, 14603. Praise the Lord. And uh, of course, if you are in-house, uh, you have can give your offering by uh, an envelope. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for your blessing. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah, God. Lord, if we had to pay for that word today, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. It's priceless. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for feeding our souls. Hallelujah, God. Giving us wisdom. Giving us how to get out. And Lord, we appreciate everyone that would give toward this offering today. We ask you, God, that you would multiply back to them. Hallelujah. Full measure, God. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Let men give into their bosoms. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We thank God for the deacon and for our offering. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for each and every one of you. And I just want to stop before we pray our online um, uh, prayer for our online visitors and close that out. Just want to thank all of our um, people that have been giving all of our members our online. We have a lot of folks online that also give. Uh, we thank God for, for both our online viewers and for our in-person members and, and how you've been constantly 
throughout the pandemic. How you have been paying your tithes. You have been given. And we really appreciate that because the church, amen, has to go on, has to go forward. And we do have some needs and some things that we're going to be coming to you with. Amen. Praise God. And we're, we're, we're asking, we know that you will be with us and that you will be constantly doing your part. Amen. To keep this ministry going. We're about ministry. Amen. Praise God. This church is all about ministry. And, and with that being said, I want to make this announcement to the public that we're getting ready to have our tent revivals coming up next year. Amen. Pray or the next month. Amen. Praise God. Our tent revival is coming up next month. The July 19th through the 23rd will be, this is our 20th anniversary year of the Jefferson Avenue tent revival. And if there's ever a time where it was needed, it is needed now. Amen. Where we can get out into the highways and hedges and compel men and women to come so that God's house may be filled. We're going to close out our online um, service. And then we're going to ask for those in person, if you would stick with us just for a few more minutes so we can give the announcements that we have. We also have of our Bible study on Wednesday. Those of you who want to join our Bible study, send us an email. We'll make sure that you get that link. It's seven o'clock on Wednesdays. Amen. Praise God. And it's the information is on our app. The Bible study lesson is on there weekly. It's put on every Sunday for the fall for the coming week. Uh, and you can follow us along with our Bible study. We have great Bible study on Wednesday. Amen. Praise God. It's only an hour. All of our services, we're trying to keep under an hour and a half. We're trying to keep all of our services mo mostly tailored to an hour, but sometimes uh, we go a little bit over as today. So we thank God. Also, I want to make this announcement publicly too. Uh, on third Sundays, which is Youth Sunday, uh, we're making that dress down day on third Sundays, on Youth Sundays, okay? Youth Sundays, uh, we're making that dress down day. Now, I personally from the school of uh, is come as you are. That's where I'm from the school of. I'm just going to be quite honest with you and upfront and transparent that I'm for come as you are as long as you come correct. Hello, somebody. Now, you know, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you got to, you know, take a double look, then you're probably not coming correct. All right. You don't need to be a distraction. Hello, somebody. It's not about you. It's about God. But I am of the school of come as you are, come comfortable as you are. I've told ladies they can wear pants. That's okay. That's all right. As long as they ain't too tight. Hello, somebody. Y'all looking at me funny. I say it in love, right? But come as you are. I'm saying this to the world, to the, to the public. This is the church. You don't have to come looking a certain type of way. You don't have to come dressed to the nines. If that's prohibiting you from coming to church, I'm letting you know, come as you are. This is a church, the church doors are open to you. Come as you are. The Bible says, come all ye that are laboring heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Come on into the house of worship. You're welcome here. Even if you don't smell all the way right, we'll get you right. We'll get you some soap. I'm just being funny. It's okay to laugh because we ain't always smelt all the way right. Come on now. Even if you don't think you look all the way right, I'm a barber, my wife's a cosmetologist, we'll get you right. We'll get you right. Just come. Amen. We're getting ready to pray. Father, we thank you for our online visitors. We thank you for our online viewers. We thank you for those, oh God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing, God. Oh God, keep doing a work in us, God. Keep us, oh God, building your kingdom for your kingdom. That's what it's about, God. Ministry and kingdom work, God. Keep us focused on kingdom work, God. In the name of Jesus. Now as we depart, we're getting ready to depart from our online viewers. Bless those that are on Facebook. Bless those that are watch this at a future later time, God. Let it be a blessing. Save, oh God. Sanctify, deliver, set free, oh God, untrap, release, and free those, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you all. We pray for our mothers. We pray that you strengthen them and keep them, oh God. And those who are listening under the sound of my voice, bless them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Just hang with us.